and welcome back to Sweet and Dirty Teach You Guys How to Map Props. Um, I apparently have a teacher's assistant with me today, so um, so we've learned where we need to get our prop maps from, which is the Race West, the Race website. I swear I can talk. The race website we go to search and we type in the prop that we're looking for and we look for it in the search we save that to our desktop and then we upload it to our photo sharing website grab the direct link and apply it to the prop in order to learn how to um, see how it works there's other things you can do you can also apply like just you know paint on certain sections with different colors there's also some color maps by Monroe as well as some others um, to help you figure out um, what part of the map goes where but this one is actually pretty simple so what we're gonna do using this map right here I'm going to I use Photoshop but there's a lot of free photo editing um, programs out there the GIMP and paint.net most popular ones so what I'm going to do I'm going to go and open and I'm going to go to my desktop and grab my generic white bed mesh you got it so far sweet okay you're doing it paint.net okay that's fine Okay, so you grab that one, that's the one we're going to open. Now what I'm going to do, so this is saved as a particular type of file. See how it says index right there? First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to up to image right here. I'm going to change the mode to index to RGB color. There's other things you can do with it. I'm not a Photoshop expert. This is just how I do it. So there's more than one way to skin a cat, I'm sure. This is just the way I do it. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to scale up my image. Because right now I believe it's a 512 by 512. I want it pretty big. So I, if I wanted to put something very detailed in there, everything will pick up. So that's just easier for me because I'm blind. So um, image. And I'm going to go to image size. And you see where it says 512 by 512. This little button right here makes it unlock, so you can actually make it 512 by 1024. I don't want to do that, so I'm actually going to leave it there. And I'm going to make it 1024. Okay. And then I'm going to do that. And I'm going to hit Control and my minus button to zoom out. Now, this is pretty easy to um, manipulate because you have, let's see, one, two, three, and four pretty much square sections that you can just basically add textures that you find off the internet that are free to use. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to add a new layer or create a new layer let me know if I need to go slower sweet okay okay and then I'm going to do file and place linked and I'm actually gonna go where do I have downloads and I'm going to go to this because I got some cool stuff in here that looks like fabrics and I don't see anything that I actually want to use maybe I do that one I don't know. no I don't there's nothing in here that I really want to use so I'm gonna go back up and I think I have other fabrics in here somewhere here we go 
Nope. Yeah, that is how it works. It's killing time, so I'm just for right now, I'll just go with this for right now. So I'm going to go with this one right here. And see how tiny it is. Tiny, tiny, tiny. But really all I need to do is I'm going to drag it over here. So if I zoom in a little bit, I just want to make sure that I'm only covering this square right now. This area. It's actually a few squares, but I know this is actually the bottom of the bed. So this is what I want to cover. Um, this is going to look horrible because it's going to look overly stretched. But I'll show you the way I actually would fix that. So, but this is good enough for now. I'm going to scale this and stretch it till it fits over the red lines for this section right here. And I'm hit my check mark. And I'm going to zoom out. Ta-da! There it is. That's going to be our bed cover, or our bed sheets. And for our comforter, I'm going to repeat that same process. To make it simpler, all you would do is repeat the whole um, file, then place linked, and grab another texture that you want to use. I'm going to just, just for the sake of time, I'm going to duplicate my layer. I'm going to edit that layer and I'm going to transform scale I'm going to move it over here to the edge of my red line now if you can't really guess or you're not comfortable with guessing what you can do is you can actually change the opacity on the layer you're editing so that way opacity means the clarity of see how the image is fading on me this is opacity. So the, the basically the see throughiness. Yes, that's a technical term. That's what we say. See throughiness. I'm kidding. Um, uh, how see through or how that that's all I got. How see through. So you bring it down to however low you need it for you to see the red lines behind it, and then you continue on with your scaling. Boop, 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 doop. Till it's over all your red lines over here. And you hit done. Turn back your opacity up. Okay. And then, um, for those of you, uh, okay, for the, those of you who are using Photoshop, you have libraries. What you can do is you can also add, let's say, I really like this texture and I know I'm going to use it several, several times. What I can do is I can actually select a layer, click it, hold it, and drag it up and add it to my library. And I can even right click on it and edit this. Um, I should go into that later. but. I've done this in the past and I actually have a wood texture I like to use very often and it is here so what I'm going to do from my library is I'm going to drag click it hold it drag it over here I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and I'm going to actually since this is actually this image, this section right here is actually the very bottom of the bed, not going to be visible, so it can be the wood texture and it's not going to be that big of a difference. But let's say you're doing this on a glass floor and you want the bottom of the bed to be visible, so it's going to have to look nice. You can pick something else. Um, and then I'm going to put that like that, so it's covering both of those images. Done. Now at the very, very top, I'm going to actually add another layer. And this is where our overlay comes in. Let's zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to do the whole file, then place linked. And I'm going to just 
just go to my desktop and generic white bed overlay. I'm going to place and see how tiny, tiny, tiny it is. But we need to actually see the purple line that I have. I want to actually match it up to where I get those purple lines. Don't ask me what they're called because I have no idea. I know something along the line of guide. And if I move it like that, I get quadrants basically. So I know I'm dead center. So I know I'm fitting on it perfectly. And I'm going to hit done. You can even play with the opacity on this because right now I don't like these little checkerboard things on the side. I can either you know, edit that particular layer and I can clean it up and take that off or make it all black maybe. Uh, but I'm actually just going to turn it down just a little bit. And that's pretty good. Um, now I'm going to export as. If your image does not have transparencies on it, meaning it doesn't have any see-through parts on it, where there's just no texture there, it should be a JPEG, no matter what. It should always be a JPEG. Um, I don't have any transparencies on this, so I'm going to make it a JPEG, JPG. And I'm going to... I use the JPG versus the PNG when my textures that I'm putting on are solid because it is a much smaller file. If you need to repeatedly save the file, then stay with the PNG because texture quality when you do the JPEG, um, if you only need to save it once, it's really complicated, sorry, I'm trying to over, okay. You do the JPEG because it's a smaller file. You can get just as good of an image sometimes with a JPEG if you make sure you're only saving it once and you're using quality textures to create your map. Um, pings are much larger files. Yes, they hold and maintain their, their uh, quality much better than a JPG, but it also, if you have a zabby or a layout full of pngs there's going to be people that are just simply not going to be able to make it to your layout because it's just overwhelming their their video card or their computer okay um the smaller the file in both dimensions as well as actual file size meaning if you hover over a, um, a file and it tells you it's 500 kilobytes that's a pretty big file but let's say it's only 256 by 256. There's a lot of detail and there's a lot of color and there's a lot of depth in that picture. Um, you want to have make sure it's to the power of 2. All the dimensions are to the power of 2. Um, as well as it's the smallest file size as possible. So smallest dimensions and smallest file sizes as possible. With still getting the same um, nice look that you'll get. Okay, so what I'm going to do... I made it into a JPEG, JPG, JPEG. I'm going to actually bring it down by 50% on my image size. So I have a nice 512 by 512. And if I wanted to, right now it's 182. If I look over here, it's 182.8 kilobytes. That's still pretty big. I like to stay under that. I mean, for, for a Zabby, I kind of, that's okay. But if you're doing a larger layout where it's potentially a lot of people there you're going to want to stay under um, stay as small as possible so I can even bring it down further and I'm running out of time here was still maintaining somewhat of the same image quality and maybe keeping it under 100 so I'm going to finish up um, I'm going to export it I'm going to save it A test and I'm probably not going to have time to upload it within my thing so I guess there's a part three let me try and see if I can do it in 